Welcome Year 5 to another chapter of the BFG. Curiously enough, the Queen looked petrified too. One would have expected her to look surprised, as you or I would have done had we discovered a small girl sitting on her windowsill first thing in the morning. <clears throat> but the Queen didn't look surprised. She looked genuinely frightened. The maid, a middle-aged woman with a funny cap on the top of her head, was the first to recover. What in the name of heaven do you think you're doing in here? She shouted angrily to Sophie. Now I'm just going to pause there for a moment. <clears throat> she shouted angrily to Sophie. Now this is called a reporting clause when we've had some speech and then we um, say something like said or um, whispered, whatever it may be, after the speech, that's known as a reporting clause. Now we're going to have a look at these um, after I finish reading the chapter. <clears throat> now that I've read, she shouted angrily to Sophie, I now know the manner in which that maid has spoken to Sophie and that gives us um, it creates a different effect um, with the dialogue. So how I should have read that was, What in the name of heaven do you think you're doing in here? She shouted angrily to Sophie. So what I want you to do whilst I'm reading this chapter is take note of those reporting clauses. Um, have I used, you know, has uh, Roald Dahl used the word um, murmured, whispered, shouted, screeched? Take note of those. Because as we go through, um, we're going to be thinking, or I want you to be thinking about, what effect do these words have on the dialogue? And there's going to be a little bit of work um, at the end of it for you to just make some notes. Sophie looked besiegingly towards the Queen for help. The Queen was still staring at Sophie. Gaping at her would be more accurate. Her mouth was slightly open, her eyes were round and wide as two saucers, and the whole of that famous, rather lovely face was filled with disbelief. Now listen here, young lady, how on earth did you get into this room? The maid shouted furiously. I don't believe it, the Queen was murmuring. I simply don't believe it. I'll take her out, ma'am, at once, the maid was saying. No, Mary! No, don't do that. The Queen spoke so sharply that the maid was quite taken aback. She turned and stared at the Queen. What on earth had come over her? It looked as though she was in a state of shock. Are you all right, ma'am? The Queen was saying. When the Queen spoke again, it was in a strange, strangled sort of whisper. Tell me, Mary, she said, tell me quite truthfully, is there really a little girl sitting on my windowsill or am I still dreaming? She is sitting there all right, ma'am, as clear as daylight, but heaven only knows how she got there. Your Majesty is certainly not dreaming. It is this time. But that's exactly what I did dream, the Queen cried out. I dreamed that as well. I dreamed there would be a little girl sitting on my windowsill in her nightie and she would talk to me. The maid, with her hands clasped around her starched white, bo um, <clears throat> white bosom, was staring at her mistress with a look of absolute disbelief on her face. The situation was getting beyond her. She was lost. She had not been trained to cope with this kind of madness. Are you real? The Queen said to Sophie. Y y y yes, Your Majesty, Sophie murmured. What is your name? S Sophie, Your Majesty. And how did you get up onto my windowsill? No, don't answer that. Hang on a moment. 
I dream that part of it too. I dream that a giant put you there. He did, Your Majesty, Sophie said. The maid gave a howl of anguish and clasped her hands over her face. Control yourself, Mary, the Queen said sharply. Then to Sophie she said, You are not serious about the giant, are you? Oh yes, Your Majesty, he's out there in the garden now. Is he indeed? the Queen said. The sheer observity of it all was helping her to regain her composure. So he's in the garden, is he? she said, smiling a little. He is a good giant, Your Majesty, Sophie said. You need not be frightened of him. I'm delighted to hear it, said the Queen, still smiling. He is my best friend, Your Majesty. How nice, the Queen said. He's a lovely giant, Your Majesty. I'm quite sure he is, the Queen said. But why have you and this giant come to see me? I think you've dreamed that part of it. Your Majesty, Sophie said calmly. That pulled the Queen up short. It took the smile right off her face. She certainly had dreamed that part of it. She was remembering now how the end of her dream. Um, it had said that a little girl and a big friendly giant would come and show her how to find the nine horrible man-eating giants. But be careful, the Queen told herself. Keep very calm, because this is surely not very far from the place where madness begins. You did dream that, didn't you, Your Majesty? Sophie said. The maid was out of it now. She just stood there, goggling. Yes, the Queen murmured. Yes, now you come to mention it, I did. But how do you know what I dreamed? Oh, that's a very long story, Your Majesty, Sophie said. Would you like me to call the big friendly giant? The Queen looked at the child. The child looked straight back at the Queen. Her face open and quite serious. The Queen simply didn't know what to make of it. Was someone pulling her leg, she wondered. Shall I call him for you, Sophie went on. You'll like him very much. <sighs> the Queen took a deep breath. She was glad no one except her faithful old Mary was here to see what was going on. Very well, she said. You may call your giant. No, wait a moment. Mary, pull yourself together and give me my dressing gown and slippers. The maid did as she was told. The Queen got out of the bed and put on a pale pink dressing gown and slippers. You may call him now, the Queen said. So if he turned her head towards the garden and called out, BFG! Her Majesty the Queen would like to see you! The Queen crossed over to the window and stood beside Sophie. Come down off that ledge, she said. You're going to fall backwards at any moment. Sophie jumped down into the room and stood beside the Queen at her open window. Mary, the maid, stood behind them. Her hands were now planted firmly on her hips and there was a look on her face which seemed to say, I want no part of this fiasco. I don't see any giant, the Queen said. Please wait, Sophie said. Shall I take her away now, ma'am? the maid said. Take her downstairs, give her some breakfast, the Queen said. Sorry, take her downstairs and give her some breakfast, the Queen said. Just then, there was a rustle in the bushes behind the lake. Then out he came, 24 feet tall, wearing his black cloak with the grace of a nobleman, still carrying his long trumpet in one hand. He strode magnificently across the palace lawn towards the window. The maid screamed. The queen gasped. Sophie waved. The BFG took his time. He was very dignified in his approach. 
When he was close to the window, <clears throat> when he was close to the window where the three of them were standing, he stopped and made a slow, graceful bow. His head, after he had straightened up again, was almost exactly level was almost exactly level with the watchers at the window. Your Magister, he said. I is your humbug servant. He bowed again. Considering she was meeting a giant for the first time in her life, the Queen remained astonishingly self-composed. We are very pleased to meet you, she said. Down below, a gardener was coming across the lawn with a wheelbarrow. He caught sight of the BFG's legs over to his left. His gaze travelled slowly upwards along the entire height of the enormous body. He gripped the handles of the wheelbarrow. He swayed. He tottered. Then he keeled over on the grass in a dead faint. Nobody noticed him. Oh, Magister, cried the BFG. Oh, Queen. Oh, Monarcher. Oh, Golden Sovereign. O oh, ruler, O oh, ruler of straight lines, O oh, sultana, I is come here with my little friend Sophie to give you a... The BFG hesitated, searching for the word. To give me a what, the Queen said. Assistance, the BFG said, beaming. The Queen looked puzzled. He sometimes speaks a bit funny, Your Majesty, Sophie said. He never went to school. Then we must send him to school, the Queen said. We have some very good schools in this country. I has great secrets to tell, Your Majesty, the BFG said. I should be delighted to hear them, the Queen said, but not in my dressing gown. Shall you wish to get dressed, ma'am? <clears throat> Shall you wish to get dressed, ma'am? the maid said. Have either of you had breakfast? the Queen said. Oh, could we? Sophie cried. Oh, please, I haven't eaten a thing since yesterday. I was about to have mine, the Queen said, but Mary dropped it. The maid gulped. I imagine we have more food in the palace, the Queen said, speaking to the BFG. Perhaps you and your little friend would care to join me. Will it be repulsant snozcumbers, Magister? The BFG asked. Will it be a what? the Queen said. Stinky snozcumbers, the BFG said. What is he talking about? The Queen says. It sounds like a rude word to me. She turned to the maid and said, Mary, ask them to serve breakfast for the three in the... I think it had better be in the ballroom. That has the highest ceiling. To the BFG, she said, I'm afraid you'll have to go through the door on your hands and knees. I shall send someone to show you the way. The BFG reached up and lifted Sophie out of the window. You and I is leaving her Magister alone to get dressed, he said. No, leave the little girl here with me, the Queen said. We'll have to find something for her to put on. She can't have breakfast in her nightie. The BFG returned Sophie to the bedroom. Can we have sausages, Your Majesty, Sophie said, and bacon and fried eggs? I think that might be managed, the Queen answered, smiling. Just you wait till you taste it, Sophie said to the BFG. No more snozcumbers from now on. Hi, Year 5. I hope you enjoyed that chapter from the BFG. Um, just a little task for you to take a look at now. And I'll just share my screen. So I spoke early in this chapter um, specifically about this reporting clause. She shouted angrily um, and that was referring to the maid speaking to Sophie so she shouted angrily towards Sophie um, so when we have a piece of speech the reporting clause can go either at the um, beginning of the speech or at the end of the speech um, 
And that will have an effect on the reader. It will have an effect on the scene within the book. It will have an effect on how you read. Um, it will have an effect on the voice in your head. So what I'd like you to do now, you don't have to go and pick out these reporting clauses. I've picked them out for you from the chapter. She shouted angrily towards Sophie, whispered the BFG, the Queen murmured, and Sophie said calmly. Now, I want you to go away and find these reporting clauses, read this in context, and then tell me the effect that this has had on you as the reader, um, how you may have read this, um, the scene itself, the characters. Tell me as much information as you can about each reporting clause. Thanks, Year 5. Enjoy.